Welcome to the Star Wars Collector's Archive Podcast. It's the Cast. Newest news on the oldest toys, from bubble bath to belt buckles, from 12 packs to 2 packs. New boss, alien bounty hunter, Star Wars collection. Watch out, watch out! We bring the world of vintage Star Wars memorabilia alive! Informative features and personal collecting stories. Offer expires December 31st, 1979. An Octavito with Tempesco. The Supreme Master, the Emperor. Brought to you by the Star Wars Collector's Archive. We peek behind the fake beard of General Maydeen with special focus collector Brock Walker. Discuss the General's Jedi outtakes, nuggets of alternate sculpts, talk about head pulls, go way deep on bag samples from Macau, Macau, Cow, plus an epic market watch game. Finally, Gus Lopez drops in from Argentina to give a brief and technologically abbreviated unloved segment on vintage candy wrappers in honor of Halloween for the 93rd Vintage Pod. Wampa Wampa. Welcome to Kivecast 93. 93, Steve. It's it's an exciting time at the Kivecast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, unprecedented. We, unprecedented. We, we don't usually talk much about the actual day because, you know, it's... it's uh, we're an audio magazine. We're not a newspaper. We're not some. Right. We're not supposed to be day and date. But uh, if if you've been listening to the show, you know that that Steve and I hold baseball in a very close place in our heart. Yes. And uh, and what's happening right now, Steve? Right now, what happened yesterday, and what's going to happen tomorrow? Well, our uh, our two teams are facing off in the World Series for the first time in over a hundred years. So yes. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but mo- more little... importantly, since we've been alive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and it's 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 pretty funny. I mean, when we first started, Steve, I don't know if you remember this, but the Lakers played the Celtics. Yes, um, that was that same year, wasn't it? Yeah, that was the first yeah. year that we started. You know, nine years yeah. ago. Um, but I don't really care about basketball. Basketball's stupid, and people who like <laughs> basketball are stupid. Um, but it it's funny. So we we mentioned it on the on the Facebook page. Well, I mentioned it on the Facebook page. Yeah. Yeah. And I got a lot of snarky comments about how, oh, I hate it when you talk about baseball anyway. Um, <laughs> but it really is true, Steve. I don't think that we, the show would exist if it weren't for baseball. No, I, I don't think so either. Um, I really don't. Because uh... the first time that we got together, it was just really awkward. Because I was just for some reason really weirded out that you were so young. <laughs> um, well, because like, I was like 28 and you were like 21. You know, like, yeah, that's... yeah the, the gap there, it, it feels a lot wider than it does now yeah um, it's just I, what happened and so i didn't really want to talk about star wars toys but it turns out we both thought about baseball in the same way like we both <laughs> had the same kind of ridiculous passion for broadcasters yeah. and for minutia and, and obscure players yeah so yeah so when i when i told my son that that we that the dodgers were playing the red Sox, he uh <laughs> he's a joker he goes oh good it could be the end of the podcast everyone's been waiting for <laughs> Oh, oh man! I I did. Uh, I took uh, a lot of pleasure in reading reading that comment. <laughs> yeah, but we'll we'll see. I mean, uh, it doesn't look too good for for, no, the, for the boys I'm in a, blue. I'm a little a little battered, but I'm not yet dead. I'm I'm battered and in, in, but not beaten and not uh, not broken just yet. But uh, I'm on my way. Well, for, for those of you that listen to the show and like to think of Steve and I as friends and not just as human beings who are going to be bringing you Star Wars content. Um, which I know we we're much better at being human beings than we are at delivering Star Wars content. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. But so yesterday we were watching the game, and it's cool because I was actually showing my girlfriend baseball for the first time, and, and that was kind of cool, um, a challenge. And uh, <laughs> and like Steve and I were texting each other back and forth, but we're both completely pessimistic. So <laughs> so we wouldn't taunt the other person when something would go well. No. Anytime something would go bad for our team, you're like, well, this is over. Uh, the whole series is done. I don't know why we're playing anymore. So. Yeah. Well, that continues tomorrow. We'll it, see. It does. But, Steve, that's not why we're here. No. No, no, no. And I did actually have a sort of candy corn rant in my head, which I think we could go, go into <laughs> later when, whenever the show dips. What are we okay. here to talk about, Steve? Well, uh, I guess 
uh, A is our, our we're getting back to figure of the month, which I'm pretty excited about because it's it's been a while since we've had a traditional episode, right? So yes, we're talking about General Maydine. <laughs> yes, we have to get to the crux of the subject. But yeah, so we're going to be talking about General Maydine. We're also going to be talking we, you know what, Steve, the same hmm. episode where we made the wager about the Lakers and the Celtics was the first episode that we ever had Gus on the show. Really? Yeah, I remember. Cause what, it, what was the wager? I don't even remember this. Okay. All right. So um, I don't know if I want to remember now. Well, no, it's funny. So my dad flew to Santa Barbara once to visit me. Yeah. And he flew first class and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was ahead of him. <laughs> and so he, he like went to ask Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for an autograph for me. Uh-huh. Which obviously yeah. he just wanted to talk to Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Right. And right. he just gave him this autographed ba- uh, basketball card instead. And <laughs> right. just didn't even say, just, just here you he go. Just, he just handed him a pre preset one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so our bet was whoever loses gets to keep the card. So <laughs> if the Lakers had lost, I would have given you the card to make up for the loss. If it was if it was two years prior, yeah, I would have had that card in, in my in my house. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that that was that really early episode that we recorded that was... in your weird bank oh, yeah. apartment. That that weird age of my life. That oh my so god, awesome. Steve! <laughs> <laughs> like like you like your like your entire like your entire apartment. It was like you know the fridge only had like a half empty thing of ketchup. It was, it was like you had it one was in bowl. A, it was in a in... converted garage. It was very <laughs> Wayne's World like. <laughs> It, not good. Not in a good way either. It was. You definitely needed the, the civilizing uh, influence of of, uh, of Tess. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So that was the last time we talked to Gus. But we're right. going to be talking to Gus again today. I just thought we haven't talked to Gus in a while. And, no, we haven't. And seeing as he is the guy who runs the archive, we might as well have him on the archive podcast every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's fair. No, it's, so did you uh, did you have a General Nadine when you were growing up? You know, I think I must have. Yeah, no, I did. I mean, I, okay. I was, uh, I wasn't spoiled with attention, but I was spoiled with toys. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have preferred, you know, a little more of the former uh, in exchange for some of the latter. That's probably why. In exchange for your general, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so downstairs recently went to a storage space and, and we got this, and I opened up this old Star Star Wars lunchbox and it was filled with all my childhood um, Star Wars toys. Right. Um, yeah. Which, if I were a more nostalgic person, that would have been like a huge deal, um, <laughs> a big moment. But uh, but yeah, no, there, there's a Maydean in there. I, I'm, okay. Because he's he's not a nobody character, you know. I mean, he <laughs> he gets real good FaceTime, and and you yeah, get the sense yeah. that he's important. Right. Yeah. So it's it with me. I I had one too, and that that makes sense because I'm I'm sure there were plenty of them around by the late '80s. <laughs> Um, but for me, I always just treated him as my Imperial commander, actually, because I, I didn't have any Imperial officers. And because he had the gray outfit, I'm just like, eh, he can be, a, he can be that guy. I don't really, <laughs> I just didn't associate him with, with General Maydean, the character at all. Similar, like, I guess he was kind of like the, the same correlation with the B-Wing pilot and Luke for me. I mean, it was just, it just made sense right. in my weird, distorted <laughs> world. But yeah. Yeah. Well, he doesn't look like particular a good guy I, I guess he's the most bearded of all figures that's yeah i think that's that's probably accurate i mean yeah. even obi-wan has a beard but there's just something so definitively beardly about <laughs> about general maydean yeah and, and that there's an inf- there's a tie-in there for you know between the toy and the, the the film which i'm sure we'll get to but that that beard is a big it's a big part of it i, I just typed into the show notes definitively beardly um <laughs> I, I, think I think that, that might, might be, the title. be the title. Yeah, that's yeah. the title right there. <laughs> Definitively beardly. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Steve. Let's you know. I mean, I I, I have some I have some sky coos. You know, we're going to be talking okay. to Brock, who's a who's a super yeah. collector and a super baseball fan. But first, Steve, why don't you flip the script? Really, really hot. Flip the script. Flip the script. <laughs> All right, Steve. What did you discover when flipping the script? All right. So. Um, <laughs> There aren't a ton of really interesting nuggets when it comes to these Jedi characters, but uh, one thing I found was for, for specifically for Maydeen was uh, in the I guess in the rough draft for Jedi, the Rebels had their 
space on a, a grassy planet named Sisamon or Sisamon or something along those lines, which if you, you know, if you remember that 1995 book with all the Macquarie art, the, the like illustrated universe or whatever it was called, I think at that point they decided that they were just going to use the artwork and call it Alderaan. <laughs> huh. And then uh, it got reused again with, with Rebels as the main planet in that show. But anyway, so they have their base on this grassy planet, and uh, that's where the whole war room scene originally takes place. And um, at this point, this is, you know, we talked about this in the Commando episode. Leia was off doing her own mission to, to break down the, the shields or whatever. And so uh, Maydeen plays the role of breaking this news to uh, Han, Luke, and Lando. <laughs> so he's the one that lets them know that Leia is off on this mission. And I guess Han gets really pissed off and he decides he wants to go after her. And then this is where it gets a, a little bit weird is that Luke apparently, kind of as a joke, uses the force to uh, bind Han to like a control panel with some binders. <laughs> really? Just to like, yeah, it's so bizarre. Which, like, thinking about that, that it would just be so not right, <laughs> but <laughs> just weirdly written. And so, yeah, uh, that that joke passes, and then uh, you know, Maydeen and Lando stay behind, and Han and Chewie and and. Luke go off to to go find Leia, but I just thought it was interesting that, yeah, a that weird joke involving Luke and Han, and then Maydean kind of just being the guy that says, "Oh yeah, she's off doing that." <laughs> right. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Um, I guess but, uh, definitely the the pranking Luke is much more important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that's the the true interesting piece of that. But um, that would have set yeah. up some. That would have set up Last Jedi a little bit better. <laughs> Hey, yeah. so if you agree, Last Jedi is a great movie. Please comment, post, and, and, and no. like. Oh no, if you think it's a bad, whatever it is, oh, I don't know. Oh. Don't. Uh. Um. Uh. <laughs> uh, but, but what I actually found that was to me more interesting, and, and probably a little more interesting for a, a toy podcast, was some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, yes. Can we get into that a little bit. Yeah, sure, Steve. Uh, should I wait? I don't have to come up. Okay, so I got another computer. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, hopefully this episode is going to come out uh, before. I don't know if I can release this before the Red Sox beat the dog. I mean, before the series is over. Um, <laughs> but I hope we'll see how the well, computer goes. Well, you know what? It, it's um, uh, it's going pretty quick. So. Yes, it, it is going pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm but, not going to. I'm going to hope that, that, that it takes long enough <laughs> so, for that to happen. But so if I if I do indeed have some kind of sound bit for behind the scenes, I don't think we will. It's all part of flip the script, Steve. Oh, come now, space freaks. I can't pass up an opportunity to write a new jingle. Yes, this new computer is causing me trouble. It isn't very good. But I want to record a new jingle. And this is just for Steve, because since recording this, yes, the Red Sox have won the World Series. But I honor Steve, and I honor our friendship, and I am not going to gloat about that. Instead, I am going to write a song for him for our new section. So we've had Steve flips the script, but what do we call it? when Steve goes behind the scenes. I think it would go a little something like this. Let's go behind the scenes. Let's go with Dan and Steve. Let's go behind the Steve. You're welcome, buddy. Sorry, sorry, your team lost. You, you know what I say every time my team loses? I turn off the TV in anger and I say, you know, that's, that's why I prefer art, because you, you can't lose art. You can't lose Star Wars, you know? You can't lose Star Wars toys. They're never going to let you down the way Chris Taylor and Dave Roberts and Manny Machado let you down. So, let's get back to General Maydean. Damn it, did that sound like gloating? I didn't mean it to. I, it's really, you know, the problem is I'm from Boston, and it's so hard not to be a complete and total at Behind the Steve! All right. Yeah. So what, why, don't, why don't you tell me uh, more about... First of all, is, like, Maydean's a funny name. Right? Yeah, it is It is kind of strange. Um, I don't... And, it, it you know, some Star Wars names kind of go through different iterations through scripts. Like, I feel like some of them, they'll, they'll change a little bit. But his, it was always Maydean, like, from the, from the get-go, which I think is interesting. And I, I have no idea where it came from, but... Um, I mean, it's an anagram <clears throat> of made in. So it could be like a to like a toy joke, 
You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Like made in Hong Kong, right? <laughs> um, or it could be like a tribute to the the name Nadine. You know, like the great Chuck Berry yeah. song. Oh wait, yeah, yeah. And that's Maybelline. No, Nadine, <laughs> won't you be true? Oh, uh, Nadine. Well, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Nadine. Yeah, Nadine. What's well, yeah? And it's funny. Like as a kid, I always heard Nadine with an N rather than Nadine. So it took, I think, probably that whatever trading card that I saw. I'm like, oh, that's what it was. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so he was played by this Irish actor named Dermot Crowley. And uh, so I, I love, A, that he's, he's Irish and he's <laughs> in no way Irish in, in Return of the Jedi. But um, so I guess the first day he walked on set, uh, he didn't have a beard. He was smooth faced and the crew presented him with this fake beard, insisting that he had to wear it. And... Uh, according to the the Rinsler book on making of Jedi, it was Kenner that they, they had pretty much stipulated this because they'd already kind of started pre-production on the toy, and uh, and since the toy had a beard, he had to match it. Which wow. it's just it's so bizarre because all this details is being put into this <laughs> this character and this action figure that, that probably isn't going to be going on to a, a great <laughs> a great future. <laughs> Yeah, right. you know, it's, it's it's just funny to me that there was such a, a kind of a reversal of of that attention where it's it's not the the on screen character that's it has you know to be matched by the, the toy. toy. Yeah, it's the toy that's that's you know correcting the guy on set, which just I mean it is the the pinnacle of of fake beards, you know, at least like physical ones, not digital ones, but it's just so yeah. You know that that's a whole other area we could go into, like. <laughs> like the 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 when the figure doesn't because if you think about like the the rebel soldier right yeah like it, right. the rebel soldier is Cliff Clavin but then the thing on the card back doesn't look like him right I guess that's just a soldier figure so it doesn't matter yeah I, I guess yeah. people would have been upset I mean they they went to all that effort with <laughs> Snaggletooth to to fix the Snaggletooth yeah uh, yeah it would, it would have been funny if they actually like put a blue Snaggletooth in the original Star Wars movie <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, no, so not... in that case, the 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 dog, the the, the tail is wagging the dog, and right. Nadine had right. to have a beard. But then yeah. here's my question, Steve. Okay. How come the beard <laughs> doesn't match? <laughs> like the you mean like the figure in the character or, yeah. or how so? Because I, Nadine yeah. in the movie has like a red beard and like kind of right. brown red I, hair, right? Yeah, yeah. He's kind of got like a like a reddish blondish kind of look to him yeah and yeah and the kind figure of a is skyish very... look you know? yeah yeah I, 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 <laughs> or like i was just i think texting this to you guys like to me i realized like he's always reminded me of uh graham chapman from monty python and the holy grail like that's the kind of beard he has to me right um, but not not this weird kind of like green gray beard that's on the on the actual figure so <laughs> i don't know it's it's just funny so that got me thinking about my sky coup Okay. All right. And and made me realize that that actually, Maydean is a great figure for contemplating uh, life and death, oh. B because oh, boy. because he's actually if you look at the carded figure, he is actually looking off to the side, yeah, to his figure, and his figure <laughs> is himself when he's older and therefore closer to death. <laughs> so so it it being fall here is one of two of Sky's Sky Coos about General Maydean. <clears throat> Somber side eyes drift. Red beard turns gray as fall leaves. Warm pegs worn of death. <laughs> oh, wow. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm back, Steve. I'm, I'm really yeah, happy with that one because it is fall here in Rochester. We do get a lot of, of, of leaves turning and the warm yeah. pegs worn of death. There is something that, that about is... the peg warmer and just the, I don't know what it is about the minor mortality that will stay there forever. That, that is one that you should be proud of. I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> so I, I'm definitely going to be putting that onto a card back and selling it at the archive party, the, yes, the Star Wars absolutely. Underground Rave. Uh, yes. So, so that will be pretty fun. I actually have a bonus haiku. All right. Hey, you know what? The more the better. Um, so here it is. It is a quote, and then the last line is the person who says it. Are you ready for this perfect haiku? Oh, boy. All right. Let's hear it.
General Solo. Is your strike team assembled? General Maydean. Five seven five, uh, baby. There you go. Yeah, it's like his his uh one of his two lines. <laughs> yes, that's what one of his two lines, and it's five seven, and then his name is five as well, General Maydean. Uh, that's just meant to be. It is. You know. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So speaking of the card back, this, this is kind of a weird. I just made this realization that I had sent you a. Uh, this little outtake of General Maydean, because he was in, apparently they were a little bit worried about um, a fish man doing a lot of this expository dialogue. Yes. Uh, exposition dialogue. <laughs> <for the Canadian. laughs> so, so they filmed a lot of it, you know, in backup with, with uh, Maydean, and they he also had some shots from the space battle, and, and uh, there's this, you know, the great Facebook page, Filmumentaries, that posts a bunch of great, you know, behind-the-scenes outtake footage, and he has this Maydean scene where he's uh, he's in his little console, which I always just thought of him as a dentist, you know, because he looks he just looks <laughs> like a dentist to me. He's got he's in a dentist chair. He's got the gloves and the, the smock. He just looks like a dentist. So he's in his little dentist console, and he's they're apparently getting you know attacked by a star destroyer or something. And and I'm I'm assuming it's Richard Marquand that's yelling the direction. And uh, so these guys are kind of staggering around and, and reacting to light. And then he just yells something along the lines of, uh, what is it? It's flash! Don't stagger! Don't stagger until I tell you! <laughs> it's like, it's so no, no, so, so they, they, he goes, flash! And then there's right, a flash right. on the stage. And then right after he goes, stagger! To, so <laughs> that they, like, I suppose, like, like tumble around, like stagger right, around. Right. Yeah. Well, one of the so, guys in the background staggers just a little bit too early. Yeah. And he gets super mad. <laughs> Don't stop until I say so. B127, take three. Okay, busy flying. Background action. Flash! Stagger! Flash! Stagger! Don't stagger until I tell you. Keep flying. Action Akbar. Got to give those fighters time. Maybe. Sorry, I'm... The big flash! And it's here! Hey! <laughs> so at the archive party, Steve, if, if possible, I want to get a flash stagger dance going. Oh, man. Where, like, yeah. I go, flash! Stagger! Stagger! And, you know, and then, and then, and then if people start staggering before I say flash, I'll point at them and say, don't! Oh man, that would be oh that would be something. Um, yeah. but, but then yeah, at the very end of this clip, he he, he directs them to to kind of cheer, and they, Maydine leads this just like really ferocious yell. As a, I'm assuming like the Star Destroyer is getting blown up or whatever, and like man, that would have been awesome. If that was still in the movie. Yeah, just to have a scene of like Admiral Akbar like somberly putting his head down and right next to it Maydean's like yeah because that's he, he he gets really excited pumps his yeah. fist it's worth finding out i'm sure i'll take the audio and i'll put it on, yeah, yeah. on the kivecast so that you, you can hear it so you can hear flash stagger um which might actually just make its way in general into our sound drops just many many uh, times because I, I hope so it's yeah. very funny flash stagger <laughs> Uh, um, definitely General Maydean looks like I would look if I didn't like uh, have a good haircut. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, right. He's got you got the hair colored down. You just need to to get your hair styled or, or misstyled that that way. Because that was that was my look in high school. Um, yeah, yeah. That that was your okay. I mean, if you could call it that. <laughs> um, I I also think Tom York of Radiohead could pull off a passably good uh, Maydean. Yeah. I could see that, yeah. You'd have to eat a little yeah. bit more. <laughs> Speaking of eating, Steve, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go for my uh, my candy corn thought. Okay. Okay. All right. It is it is Halloween almost, by yeah. the way. So. So so question number one: What flavor is candy corn? Yeah, <sighs> just. Yeah. Just think about that, and then two: Do the different colors have different flavors? Mm. I don't know how many hours you spent, Steve, trying to determine. <laughs> If the yellow tastes different than the orange, tastes different than the darker orange. I I, I know I did this like as a child, but yeah. uh, I, my I think I was I, it was inconclusive back then, yeah. so I, I have no idea. That's that's the great mystery. Okay, so let's get back to let's get back to the general to the general dentist. <laughs> <laughs> 
before the re- I before the rebellion, I was a dentist. Uh, <laughs> yeah, see, yeah, do yeah. be fussing. I mean, do be fussing. <laughs> Brush your teeth. Um, this is not the only bad Irish accent that you're going to be hearing uh, in this episode, no, Steve. Just I, so you know, I, I had a feeling there was another one coming. So I, I have good. no idea how to do a Scottish. I mean, an Irish accent. It just immediately goes into Scottish, which then immediately goes into Australian. So <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's how far can we kind of prolong the the slide into to Australian? <laughs> but we have a really long quote from an Irishman coming up. We do, we do, um, yeah. And let's just tease that the person who's had three. Trilogo Maydeans in his possession, um, and yeah. we're going to discuss what is a Trilogo Maydean. You you said you had news. Oh yeah, do news. Oh yeah. Okay. Watch out! It's Kenner's news. It's Kenner's news. Well, Steve, it's Kenner's news. You know, I think I, I call it news, right? Um, right. I have one very serious story and one very not serious story. Okay. Um, but it's just kind of a general thing. So if you've been paying attention to Facebook, you've maybe been paying attention to some Facebook drama that's been going mm. on. Yeah. Um, and this is just sort of a, a, a public service announcement to help people like, okay, so this is what happened. Um, there's a, a seller uh, and a collector, John Paul Ragusa, who I, I think he's been on the show maybe in the background. He lives in New York. He owns a toy show. Uh, I wouldn't call him like an old time collector, but he's definitely been around for more than a decade. You know, he's, yeah, he's contributed yeah. a lot and, and he's, he owns, uh, uh, Imperial Castle, um, and the Imperial Commissary. Um, wait, 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 what? <laughs> Not Imperial Commissary. Wait, what does he own? <laughs> it's uh, Imperial Gunnery. Imperial Gunnery. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh man. Oh, you know what? That's going to sound obnoxious like I did that on purpose, but I really didn't. But now that I say it, I got to leave that in because that's funny. I keep on making that mistake. Right. The Imperial Gunnery. Um, anyways, we'll, we'll get to the Imperial Castle. So, so there's this, uh, there was this thing where he bought a first shot. No, no. A engineering, engineering pilot, pilot. Nah, gonk right. droid. Right. Right. Um, so it was actually interesting. A lot of people didn't know what an engineering pilot was, and some people made a bunch of Kivecast jokes. So that was nice. I don't know if you saw that, Steve. Someone put. <laughs> no, we don't no, let them change our vocabulary. Someone actually. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that that made me very happy. Um, yeah. so if, if you don't know what an engineering pilot is, that's uh, one of the first figures off the line, and they write a number on the bottom of the of the foot to indicate which one it is, and they basically try to break the figure to see how it does and how it would stand stress and it's given to right. it's given to people basically doing quality control and uh you know these are fairly worthless things i mean they're kind of interesting um i have one of my collection that steve gave to me um <laughs> and uh i think you paid 75 bucks for it is that right something like that right. yeah and you just gave <laughs> it to me so this is a power droid and he paid uh three thousand dollars for it Right. Which is already just a staggering amount of money. Um, I, yeah. I, uh, so thanks, Steve. Thank, thank you for that engineering pilot. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's all about timing. <laughs> That's worth in ex- like... excess of $3,000 because it's a Chewbacca one with solid providence. <laughs> it comes from Stephen B. Danley. Yes, that <laughs> Stephen B. Danley. Um, and, uh, and when it was shipped, <laughs> it was just... A loose, regular power droid in the yeah, box. Yeah, that just blows my mind. And uh, the, the thing about, about, about John Paul is he's... Uh, um, there's like certain collectors who definitely are very vocal about being displeased. Um, and he's always kind of one of those guys. Like he's often in dust-ups and like arguments with people. And, you know, like it's... it's just, you know, I'm, I'm not telling tales out of school, right, Steve? Like, like he's he's very vocal when he's upset about stuff. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah. He's definitely I mean, but, and... the, the wrong. I mean, you shouldn't do this to anybody, but he is the absolute wrong person to do this to. Um, <laughs> and it, it it blew up on Facebook because the person who uh, who sold it to him is this character. And I'm probably not going to name him because I don't know. It just seems wrong. Um, uh, we'll just call him Seltzer Water. Um, so okay. seltzer water, like 
just didn't respond and there's all this weird stuff with his wife and going through a divorce and he's under investigation from the FBI for massive fraud at the financial company where he works. Just a bunch of really iffy stuff. A lot of, a lot of mess. Yeah. Just, just a real mess. And, uh, I, it's an interesting story because a lot of people went on and they just couldn't believe it. Like they kept saying, like, I can't believe that Seltzer Water would do this. He's such a great dude. He's such a great guy. And he's somebody who I've seen around. You know, I've been on the Facebook pages now for a couple of years, really paying attention. I know he's bought some stuff. He bought something off of me for four times what I thought it was worth. Um, although it turns out it's worth more now. So good for him. Um, but like, I never thought he was some great magical collector. I never thought he was some great figure or person. And it's not just because he was new. Like he was just some guy who had a lot of money and bought a lot of stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I, the public service announcement I'm trying to get to is it's really important to know the difference between somebody who has a lot of stuff and somebody who's really helping out the hobby. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because he wasn't. I mean, it wasn't hurting it, but just buying a lot of stuff and going out there guns blazing and getting a crazy collection and showing it off isn't actually helping anybody. And the fact that he's defrauding people or potentially defrauding people underlines this fact that there's no, like, if somebody just shows up and just buys every single possible Maydean thing and, 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 you know, brings up a truck and buys everything off of Brock and has everything and is the Maydean master, it doesn't really have any value. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put any, any stock in that person being a great person or a great guy because you just don't know. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a, it's a, that's a scary, ugh, scary situation. I'd, I'd missed, you had sent me just kind of giving me a heads up. I it had all kind of exploded by the time I even was aware of it. So it's just, Ugh. Yeah, that that's because I'm 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 on top of that. I'm you're on, top on of yeah, the you got your Steve. You got your ear to the ground. I mix it up. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, I'm a Star Wars collector. That's what I do. Um, but it, it's <laughs> it, it it was it was really interesting to watch because a lot of people really came to his defense, and one of the most interesting things was getting back to the Imperial Commissary, uh, Michael Hayden. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, he, he straight up just paid the money back and saying, he's a good friend of mine, so I know that he'll, he'll do it. He won't screw this up. And that's what made this, to me, this made this whole thing way more interesting. Because it's, that's he, definitely another spin on it, yeah. Um, I, mean, I, I mean, it's possible that he was doing it as some sort of, you know, look at me, I'm such a great guy stunt or whatever, right? I mean, if we want to be not generous to him, I don't know. Um, I, I don't see it that way, but I, I have seen people say that. So, okay, that's possible. If we put that aside, that he actually is doing it because he's his friend. Um, you know, I've been in that situation. You know, there's a friend yeah, of mine right. who is still in the hobby, who ran into some rough times in his life, and he sold a bunch of stuff to people. In this case, it was shirts. And uh, he just never shipped them. It took, like, forever. And it was like, is this dude ever coming back? And like, I was willing to pay, you know, it wasn't $2,000, but I'm like, yeah, I'll buy all the shirts. Like, he's a good guy. I know he's an okay guy. He's just going through some tough times. I don't know what it is, but we'll make it right. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know. So, uh, fortunately, I didn't have to do that. He, he, he figured it out and, you know, he's, he's a cool guy. Um, yeah. And actually listens to our show. So, yeah, what's up, dude? <laughs> um, but, uh, um, actually, I don't think I even told him that. So you're, you're welcome. Um, but then there's been other cases where other people like who I was sort like friends with, but a little bit suspicious of like went bad. And I was just like, yeah, I kind of saw that coming. Yeah. And I'm not going to put my money there. Um, so I, I don't know. I, um, what do you think, Steve? Is this, is this interesting to people? I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely interesting. I mean, I think it's, it's just uh, it gets tougher and tougher as the value of these things skyrockets. I just I feel like the more that happens, the higher risk of of uh, trouble. You know that that's just I mean before it was you know prototypes or whatever, but now you get to these things where 
something that might not have had <laughs> that might have been 75 bucks 10 years ago all of a sudden you know it's it's just crazy and um it's just really it's it's unfortunate um, and then it's made more complicated by the fact that John Paul was apparently actually just brokering it, like he was buying it for somebody else. Oh, so yeah, he was going to be making money on that. top of it. So yeah, there's I mean, it's yeah, just you know what I this is interesting because it's just a rich psychologically interesting event that's happened. Yeah, and it's still right. unfurling because the guy said that he's going to pay him back, but like, mm. I mean, I feel bad for Mike. I mean, I the way I feel was he made a mistake. He shouldn't have staked the money because. This guy is clearly just spinning out of control, right? And right. so, if you're spinning yeah. out of control, you know, it's like an addict or something, like you, could do, you or a zombie, you know, like it, <laughs> the person that you know is gone. I'm sure that he was a good friend, but whatever situation he's in right now, he's not capable yeah. of being a good friend to you. So don't even take just, it personally. Uh, just back yeah. away, disco lady. Don't don't put yourself in a tough spot, uh, needlessly. Yeah. Yeah. That's. But you know, yeah. but the fact that he did do that makes it totally interesting because now it's. Will well, this, it sets a whole other thing, right. set of things in motion. And Will this just, guy yeah. who put his money on the line to help out a friend be betrayed by that friend? So, yeah, no, that's that is a uh, wow. Yeah, I don't know. I it seems like it's been uh, at least I hope it's been a little while since something this like this has happened, but um, I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it happens all the time. We just don't always know about it. Yeah, it's it, just, uh, it, it happens a lot, and. I would also say to just never pay friends and family. Just never. You know, I just whenever I see a price on on Facebook, I just throw four percent on there. Like in my head, I throw four percent because it's like I don't. It's just never worth it. It's just never worth it unless unless it's like you, Steve, or like <laughs> you know Phineas or somebody who I've known for twelve years, fifteen years. You know, you don't know when people are gonna break bad, so. Yeah, it's a it is a scary scary uh, vintage world out there. God, but there's way more important news than that, Steve. <laughs> okay, way let's let's get to that. Yeah. Hopefully, a little more positive too. Yes, Steve. <laughs> I'm talking about the underwear that's fun to wear. <laughs> this just came out today. Yeah, yeah. Ian Regan or Ian Regan or Ian Regan uh, or Ian Reagan. <laughs> I think uh, let's let's go with that. Yeah, I like Ian Regan. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a Star Wars name. Yeah, um, just yeah. showed off uh, on Facebook a never before seen promotional uh, display. It's like for, a counter display, right? Yeah, counter yeah. display for underoos. Yes, for Return of the Jedi underoos. Return of the Jedi <laughs> underoos. And what is featured on this display, Steve? The B Wing photo art. Like, that's that image. That. That model, there it is, clear as day. The same model that is in the photo art that is in Steve's collection. Oh, so awesome. Is right there. <laughs> and it's the Underoos logo with the amazing uh, um, rainbow. And it's got the B Wing, the, it's got these two lasers shooting into a thing and just blurs <laughs> and it just says new. New. <laughs> um, and then some interesting uh, phrasing uh, on the Underoos Honorary Jedi Knight certificate inside package. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> pretty good for underwear. <laughs> so we'll include a picture of this, but this is definitely more interesting than a scammer. Uh, oh, man. And, yeah. And all that. This is just great. Uh, I mean, Steve, I is seeing... this your grail? I mean, it's it's got to be at this. I mean, it's just so uh, it's got, you know, this ultimate kind of trace thing in, in that viewing model, but it's blasting under <laughs> like, you know, right. like so great i i just love that you know I, I think it's just the best way you know what better way to use that than to, to, to advertise underwear and there was <laughs> never any b-wing pilot underwear of any kind right man i i, I don't think so yeah uh, okay well hey look out for the archive party steve's gonna be yeah, uh that's it that's it he's making himself uh b-wing pilot custom, underoos custom underoos oh man <laughs> yeah, right, right, right there by your photo art. Hey, Steve. Um, so we're going to be contacting Gus, right? Um, but he's running a little bit late. So do you know? Bit. Do you know? I realize we actually haven't talked about on the show. What's that? The end of one of our lightning round questions. Uh, which one? The the burning house, Steve. Oh my God! We haven't You're told right. this story. No, no. I mean. 
You're right. So I, I can... it's been a crazy summer, that's for sure. And now, you know, I guess summer's over. It was a crazy summer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the falls have turned like Medine's beard. Um, like Medine's beard. <laughs> I think when I'm, when I'm older, I'm just going to go for that haircut. I'm just going to go for it. Um, oh, yeah. But, um, but yeah, so yeah. I was visiting Steve with my yeah. son in Los Angeles. Right. It was like the uh, couple first couple of weeks of July. It was like right after Fourth of July, maybe. Yeah, and yeah, it was the hottest I've ever been. It it was the record setting day in terms of of Los Angeles. Um, at our house, uh, it was a hundred and twelve. Yes, uh, I think when you guys got there, and that was like in the evening. <laughs> yeah, um, the the kind of hot where you just like just scream stop you just you just it doesn't help you but you just it's just the worst like there's no fan yeah, no. that you can sit under <clears throat> no no just complete hell on yeah. earth um yeah and, and we got some so, good good tacos and yeah uh, we went to yeah, go we see found some Ant, air conditioning <laughs> uh, ant-man and wasp uh, right right and it was good you know we were able to remember that we saw the movie uh, at least until we got out of the lobby <laughs> And then yeah. we're like, oh, have you seen Ant-Man and Wasp? Um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> and then what That's happens, so Steve? You got a phone call. <clears throat> yeah, so we're, we're driving back to our house, and uh, I, I realized I'd missed a couple calls from my mom. And I'm like, That's odd. You know, I hear from her you know, every, pretty regularly, but usually she won't call over and over again. So I, I call her back, and uh, she lets me know that you know, back in Santa Barbara, which is – my hometown, like a hundred miles away, uh, this crazy fire had broken out uh, within a mile and a half of our house. <laughs> and uh, I know with the way things have been going with California fires, I just kind of, we all just kind of assumed, well, that, that might be it. Um, so yeah, I mean, we literally hopeless because, you know, that my mom was down here at the time. We were all down here. Uh, and uh we're just watching the news all night, trying to see what was going to happen. And uh, yeah, you get to that point where it's like, uh, well, <laughs> that all might be gone tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, and and it was wild because Steve was like, I don't know, it was awkward because Django yeah, and I yeah. were like, oh, I felt so bad. Well, like, oh my god, because we just got there and we were like, yeah, we were totally willing to stay in a hotel to get out of your way, but we also didn't want to go to a hotel and make you feel like we felt bad because we don't care. I mean, you were going through something, but whatever. We're we were flexible. Like we weren't actually upset at no, all. No, you, you guys were were awesome. <laughs> I just felt bad. Uh, yeah, a that we only have air conditioning in one little room here, <laughs> and b, uh, yeah, I was I was losing my mind a little bit. But uh, yeah, and yeah, you were trying to so, figure out about, and so your mom, like, there was a the your whole street was cordoned off, and so you couldn't go in there. Like, right. But yeah. You had a family so, member there, and you were like relaying messages about what Star yeah, Wars figures yeah. to save. Oh my! It was just like it was one of those bizarre situations where, yeah, a a, a family friend uh, happened to see on the news that it was happening, and she got in right as they were closing the neighborhood off, and uh, she, uh, you know. She her slipped and her in brother, as the gates were closing, you know, Indiana yeah, Jones style. Yeah, basically, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was poor cell reception. So I was trying to to describe to her these really obscure things. I, I didn't even know what to say, really. You know, I just, I just basically said, grab what you can. Um, and I tried to send a couple of pictures of things. and um, But it's just, I just kind of had already given up at that point. I just kind of assumed, you know who knows but i was more scared just like just don't go there you know it's scary don't don't do that and uh you know luckily everything was was okay and the wind died down and everything kind of quieted down but uh yeah like it's just insane that the the lightning round question was on you know playing out in real life there for for a minute and steve did i mention that at all the entire night <laughs> i don't think so no <laughs> I was like, Sky, this is not the time to mention. It was like, it was like in Spinal Tap, and I think oh, at this yeah. point, put in question is, are we gonna keep doing Stonehenge? <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> it was like, so I don't know what we're gonna change that. Uh, what we're gonna change that to? But fortunately, Steve's house did not burn down, no, um, no. which would have been a travesty because we would have lost the original photo art for the B-wing pilot. Um, 
which I suppose you might be very much the the the, the same as the underoos, at least based on the same photo. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was a, a crazy, scary experience, but I'm very, very grateful that, that nothing happened and no one was hurt. And Yeah, um, but man, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It seems like <laughs> there's always something crazy going on, you know? Yeah, I mean, that was a really big event, and we just yeah. never talked about it on the show. That was like five months ago. We've, yeah, we've, yeah. We've had plenty of shows since then, but yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I suppose we should uh, probably get one dollar flicks market watch. Okay. Well, now that we're waiting for Gus, Steve had a radical idea. We're going to do the market watch right now with Brock C.W. Walker right now. So we're not going to say hi to Brock yet. We're just going to throw him immediately into the Viper's Den, immediately into the batter's box, okay? <laughs> and, and he's going he's gonna to go into the beard. That's right. <laughs> into the beard. Yeah. Into the beard. Brock, you're going to have to go against me. Once again, this is, this is for baseball honor, okay? You're representing the Yankees. I'm representing the Red Sox, okay? <laughs> so this is for all the marbles okay. right here. All right, Steve. What what's the format? What are we going to be What are we going to be watching in the market? Okay. So so Fratastic Pete, uh, he has a, a market watch in the queue, so that'll be posted a couple days after the podcast. But uh, I've got five auctions um, that he pulled, and I'm just gonna I'll give you a quick description, and you guys are gonna give your your best, write down your best guess as the for the final price, and uh, closest to it gets a point. So it's a best of five series here. It's the the division series. Um, division series. All right. Division we can do series. It. Okay. Right. So that. Ready? Okay. So then I'm gonna predict that Brock's only gonna win one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, here we go. <laughs> uh, all right. So, game one uh, is is a Lobot head pull first shot. So it's just the the translucent Lobot head with the torso. Uh, it was graded uh, by CAS as an 85. Now, and I don't think you really know much more beyond that. Now, this is great because... Uh, he doesn't have a beard, though. No, no beard. He does not... There's no beards, in Okay, no beard. Now, Steve, do you know about this figure in the history between the two of us? The, the Lobot head pull? Yes. Brock sold me I, I, a Lobot head pull, there... like, really? five years ago. <laughs> oh, do, do you remember yeah, that, Brock? Yeah, uh... I do. I believe it was maybe the first ice. Yeah, maybe? yeah, yeah. It was. It was down in the Carolinas, uh, or Seattle. Uh, it was one of those two. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was thinking it was Seattle uh, at the Hyatt, I believe, but I could be wrong. It might be Carolina. <laughs> yeah. So, so Steve, what is a head pull test shot? So it's uh, you know a type of first shot that's basically designed to just test the stress of of the socket for the head, you know, and how, how easy it is to dislodge it, I guess. Does that sound about right, Brock? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, the funny thing about those Lobots is I don't know if any of them's ever actually had the head attached to it. They are, oh. the, most of the torso seem to be, uh, non welded. So I'm not sure. I mean, that's what they were, you know, marketed as, but they never welded okay. them. So you know what? Comes out I'm looking, easy. Uh, looking at the, uh, the description it looks like, the torso is not welded; it's just cased, so it kind of looks like it's together. Okay. So, right. yeah, so it is. It's like your right. it's like your normal Lobot head pull. It's a, it's a um, CAS style. However you want it, that's however right. it was. Okay. Yeah. So, right. I, and, and Brock, right. I believe what, you, what you sold got? it to me for four hundred dollars. Does that sound right to you? Back then. That sounds about right. Yeah. Okay. Somewhere in that neighborhood. All right. All right. So, 2013, you you had 400. What do you have it at? Yeah. For, uh, 2008. Okay. Have certainly changed. I've written down my number. Okay. Let me write mine down here. Okay. So uh, obviously this is uh, number 50. Mookie bats up at bat. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sky. Sky. What do you got? Three thousand and eight dollars. Three thousand and eight. Okay. And Brock. I I have got uh, one thousand nine hundred and twenty-seven. All right, <laughs> nine hundred and sixty-five. He steals. <laughs> so, Brock wow. gets a point there. Game, Game one. one. 
Well, All right. Well, that's not too. That, that's good, Brock. I'm I'm glad I'm glad that it's not too far off what I paid because you gave me a good deal because I was giving it to Lobart. So. Yeah. 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 Not too bad. I, I uh, a lot of those head pulls have really went up in value, but I guess Lobot's Lobot <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh you ready for the next one yes all right up sure. next game two is a mint in sealed box turret slash probot playset. and i emphasize the slash is that i didn't realize there was a, a variation on this box where i guess the more common version it's turret ampersand probot playset. <laughs> there's a second version that has a forward slash so it's a, a turret probot playset. Mitten sealed box, graded AFA eighty five. So it's it's nice. <laughs> is uh, okay. So the slash is more valuable. <laughs> I, I don't know about valuable, but I guess they're they're tougher to come by apparently. AFA eighty five. Yeah. I don't know what these lunatics are going to do, Brock. Yeah, I don't <laughs> either. Uh, I don't follow production stuff at all. Sorry about those for a loop. So... That's what makes this game fun. <laughs> okay, always, AFA no eighty five. Okay, I this variation is more rare. It's than the appara- other? apparently more rare than than the the one that has the ampersand. Um, I don't know how much, but uh, anyway, just uh, I guess a slight consideration. <laughs> All right, right, well, let me know when you guys are okay, ready. I'm, I'm I'm ready. Let me. All right, let, Sky, let, what do you got? Me... Okay, I got I've got my number down. Left fielder Andy right, Benatendi after pronking around in the outfield like a gazelle is now up to bat. Uh, I went with uh, two thousand five hundred and eight dollars. All right, and Brock. I went with three thousand five hundred dollars, thirty five hundred. Oh, this one went for four thousand eight hundred and eighty nine. <laughs> five thousand for a turn. Totally. Almost five grand for for this guy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. All right. Oh, wow. That's a that's a two nothing lead. Wow! Oh boy! I, I don't. I can't <laughs> think of a single time the Red Sox ever came back being down for the Yankees. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is going to be a fun episode. <laughs> it's, our rocket is only starting. <laughs> oh god! All right, all right. Up next, this is a uh, game three. We have a uh, double telescoping Darth Vader uh, loose graded uh, CAS eighty plus which i don't know exactly what the plus means but just think of it as an 80 it's a double telescoping saber means you, darth vader means you paid more to get it graded um <laughs> um yeah <laughs> okay sure let's go with that so um, well, well uh, 80 plus yeah loose right yeah. loose yeah okay so darth uh, okay so it's graded so all right i am ready all right. Uh, he says graded. Okay, I'm ready. I'm probably way off on this too. We'll see. Okay. All right, Sky, what do you got? Uh, Two thousand and four dollars. Okay. Uh, I have got uh, <laughs> on the extreme other end here. Uh, Twelve thousand two hundred. <laughs> <laughs> well. Six thousand six hundred and forty six, so I guess this guy is closer. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh me. Okay, six thousand dollars for a DT Vader. A, a wow. reasonable six thousand six hundred and forty six dollars. Yeah. <laughs> wow. A lot more uh, reasonable than my twelve too. <laughs> that's true. That guy just saved that's, a lot of money. That's true. <laughs> oh man. Okay. All right. What's next? So we got we got two more to go here. Uh, up next, we have a uh, one of the special offer uh, Star Wars creature sets. This is the carded three pack kind of special thing that has the Cantina aliens in it, and it's uh, sealed and it was graded an AFA eighty. So it's like a mailer or a three pack? No, no, not 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 a mailer. It's like the carded package creature set that has Hammerhead, Walrus Man, and Greedo, and has the great description okay so it's a, <laughs> they come it's a from all pack. parts of the galaxy yes okay. three pack all right come right. from all parts of the galaxy to the cantina in anchorhead that's not right but <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so it's a graded afa 80 afa 80 oh my god y'all are 
What are these really <laughs> telling me for Luke? What are these Not lunatics going to do? What are they going to do? <laughs> what are they? Okay, I've I've got AFA eighty. Uh, AFA, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I've got a number down too. Okay, I said four thousand. Four thousand for Scott. I said I, I said seventy eight hundred. Five thousand three hundred and fifty. We are tied up. Yeah. <laughs> Game oh, seven. No. Oh, one second. I just That's hurt my five. ankle. Oh, my sock is getting all bloody. What am I going to oh, do? Oh God. I better yeah. I better repost some horrible memes of transphobia. Oh, all right. I'm ready. <laughs> Get your French fries out. Dip in the oh, ketchup. That's right. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, <laughs> this is exciting. The, the, the deciding game, uh, game five, is... Uh, okay. It is a uh, carded Power of the Force yak face. It is graded AFA 90. Uh, it's got wow. a, a yellow bubble, uh, but otherwise it is... Pretty much pristine. Yak face, power of the force. I, and a, yeah. But it's a but it's a ninety. It's a ninety. Yeah, I, I I'm sure there are not many of those around. You know, seen the Tommy Boy. <laughs> the corner comes out. Oh my God, that's that's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh jeez. Okay. All right. Uh, no, no, no. I've got it. 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 All right, I've, Sky. I've got a number. I've got a number down too. Okay. All right, Sky. What do you got? Eighteen thousand one hundred ninety-two dollars. Okay. And Brock. We are so close. Seventeen thousand eight hundred ninety-nine. Oh man, nineteen thousand eight hundred and eighty-eight. <laughs> That's oh, <sighs> come back. Oh. <laughs> Love the Insanity. dirty water. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> did Dave Roberts just steal a base? Uh, he did, and then he became a terrible manager who doesn't know how to work a bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, not even you're immune to it, Steve. No, I, I know. I'm... Okay, well, everything got a little bit weird here. We are now going to call Gus Lopez and talk to him about candy wrappers. Um, you're going to hear that it gets quite interrupted and cut off, and then we'll go right back to Brock. So the segues aren't great, but the content is fine. Actually, the content is wonderful. Um, speaking of content, I actually made an intro for talking to Gus that I believe has only ever been played once on this podcast. So with some further ado, let's listen to the Gus intro and then talk to the Supreme Master. I don't want to grow up, but my toys are kids. They got a million toys that she can play with. I don't want to grow up, but my toys are kids. So, so Gus, I don't know. We were talking about it. Even though, like, you should be on the show a lot. Like, you're not on the show enough. Yeah. So, I tried to come yeah, up yeah. with... Yeah, I'm happy to be on this as much as you want. Yeah. yeah. So, we thought, what better reason... Every time if you want. Yes. Well, that's, I mean, unfortunately, yeah. that's Ron's job. He has to be on every Star Wars podcast every, every time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, but I'm happy to, to like, it's, it's a matter of just scheduling, you know, and, and, and usually I'm not traveling. So, you know, but I'm fine to do, even if it's little snippets and stuff, that's cool. Yeah. Well, the, the other day I was, I was talking to somebody um, and, you know, you come up a fair amount whenever they say, oh, what, who do you know who has the best collection? And I talk about your collection and the Death Star and everything. But I always tell them, my favorite part about Gus's collection is that the room that he really cares about is the serial room. Like, like yeah, <laughs> he true. has yes. Luke Skywalker's belt, but he's a collector. And what he really yeah. cares about is this ridiculous yeah. food collection with these little teeny tiny details that don't matter to anybody but him. And so when it was Halloween, yeah. I was like, let's talk about candy because that's related to food and you like collecting food stuff so yeah so do, do you collect yeah. star wars candy stuff gus i do yeah i mean I, I i love that stuff so yeah i have i have you know definitely i mean i collect that i, I collect all food items cereals obviously my big focus but um but I, I love finding the the candy items i even get it the current stuff too uh but but the but the vintage stuff is of course my favorite 
So, so then if we're, if we're thinking about the relationship between candy and Star Wars, like where, where does it start? What is the first Star Wars related candy items? If someone decided to like get this focus going. Yeah. yeah I mean, early on it was really, uh, I assume at this point we're recording and going live. Yes. Uh, the, um, the, the, all right. So, so just to confirm that, uh, Nestle did, you know, one of the earliest promotions, probably the first candy promotion. Um, and they, um, they, it was interesting because they tied it to the, you know, some of the jewelry they were making that the, one of the licensees was making at the time. So you could mail away for a jewelry offer, but it was on, you know, just sort of four different, I think it was four different candy bars that Nestle had, like uh, Nestle's Crunch, Milk Chocolate, $100,000 bar, and I think Chocolate. Um, and so, like, finding the wrappers for those is kind of tough, actually. They're, the People don't generally save candy bar wrappers from 40 years ago. But right. That was like, <laughs> that, I remember this offer. I remember this promotion. It was a really early one, and, and it's it's really kind of kicked off the whole candy thing. Although they did do, they did do candy in other countries as well. Uh, not right. many countries, but, 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 but they really didn't, there actually isn't a whole lot of vintage candy stuff. If you really step back and go through it, but, but, uh, but they did have things for a new hope. They were, they were already, you know, going at it in the first couple of years. Right. So, so let's see, you would get a free star Wars pendant with 10 wrappers. Um, and so, yeah, <laughs> that's not too bad of yeah. a deal. Um, that's right. Right. Plus two dollars. Yeah, so kid was like, yeah ch- for a sugar high from ten <laughs> candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was like, and they had it printed on the wrappers. It's pretty cool. It was like basically said pendant. They were the same. As far as I can tell, they're the same exact pendants you could buy in the stores. Although they came in these like brown envelopes with a little note. Um, so I have one of those somewhere in my collection, but basically, uh-huh. it, you know, it, it's packaged differently, but it's really the same pendant that you could buy. Um, but uh, but uh, as, a, as a food collector, the cool thing, I mean, it's cool to have like the mail away pendants, to, you know, in the in the in the mailing envelopes. But I think the wrappers are uh, kind of the awesome thing to go after. Um, and usually the crunch wrappers, you see them around like um Lance Worth, if you know him, he was, you know, sort of a big Star Wars dealer and uh, and has actually recently really stepped up, you know, sort of his game in, in Star Wars dealing. Um, he used to, he had a whole bunch of them years back um, and I got a couple from him back in the 90s. Um, but there are uh, the so the crunch wrappers, you find those. The other candy bars are much tougher. The other mm-hmm. three are, are a lot tougher to find. Is that yeah. is that probably just because they didn't they just didn't sell as, like just crunch bar was a better selling candy? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think so. I think it was just crunch was just the, the lead kind of candy. And and what I'm what I'm seeing, so well, you know, basic basically each, so each one of these four different candies had a different, I would say, lead figure on the front. Right. So so the right. yeah. the crunch yeah. wrapper has R two D two, so that's like yeah. he's in one color as opposed to complete black and white on the side. So I think if you're right. an R two D two collector, you would need a Nestle Crunch bar. Um, <laughs> right, right. I I would agree. If you're if you call yourself a completist R two D two collector, you know, like focus collector, you need the Crunch bar. Which is <laughs> bad news for me, Gus, because anytime you go on the archive <laughs> and you see something in yeah, really bad chocolate. condition, that means you're never going to get yeah. it because it means you don't have it in better condition. <laughs> yeah. So there. <they're, laughs> That's a good point. I think I've upgraded my milk. Well, the one on the archive for the milk chocolate isn't mine. It's, it, but I do have a decent milk chocolate wrapper, which is the one with Chewy. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, it is the milk chocolate. It's surprisingly a tough one because I remember back in the day I thought. Oh, so he's oh. in Argentina, and his wait, that was getting really exciting there too. <laughs> Let's see if he comes back. Spoiler alert. He doesn't. Gus just disappears off of the internet for that moment forward. We are going to be interviewing him next month to hear the rest about candy wrappers. And I don't know, we'll ask him something else too. Because it's fun having Gus on. Especially when the the phone works better. Alright, back to the magical fun time with Brock. Oh man, you're going to learn so much about General Maydean. Okay, can you say that? That's enough singing out of me on this episode. Yeah, but but say in the most most Brockish accent. That's why the milk chocolate. That is why the milk chocolate is hard to 
Oh, oh my that God. That is why the Gus, chocolate. Gus, what happened to you? Fine. Is that right? Steve, what, what, you said what happened? Time? Like we had some, <laughs> we had some, some problems with the Wi-Fi with Gus and all of a sudden we're talking to Brock. That's weird. Anyways, we're back with, with Brock CWA Walker. Um, and, uh, and that was a very, yes. <laughs> let me say one thing. Let me, let me say something here real quick. When we cut off from the market watch, it couldn't have been any more perfect timing. I wasn't looking at Facebook or anything, but the minute we logged off, I uh, pulled it up and there was a Jedi flyer that I had been looking for forever that popped wow, up well, tell the us minute about that. I logged on what for sale it? and I finally added it to my collection. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the Montgomery Ward envelope stuffers uh, where okay. it was for the sneak preview for the Jedi figures for the catalog packs. Hmm. And you know, they sent it out in the mail or whatever, and you filled it out and sent it back in to get the figures early, or whatever. And I've been looking for one of these and, things and how forever. How much did you pay for it? And here it is. It popped up the minute we got off the phone. Nice. <laughs> and, and can you and you can uh, then send send me a picture. And I'll, I'll put it up because I don't know anything about what you're talking about. Yeah. Not. Okay. Okay. Well, then that's good, Steve. Because Absolutely. I mean, uh, Brock. Because yeah, I, I was. You don't understand how difficult it is to play the role of a mass hole. It takes a lot of effort. Like, it, it's really, I, I know, it's but amazing. You, it's, but you are so flawless. It, wait a minute. What does that mean? Okay. Um, okay, so we're, we're, we're done with our unloved item about candy. We got cut off halfway through milk chocolate, but we're going to come back to, to Gus next uh next month and maybe we'll he'll tell us about argentina um and uh uh yeah. what i would like <laughs> to do then is have steve tell me what why brock's on the phone well uh brock uh, i'd say has somewhat of an affinity for general Medin. is that right brock <laughs> If anybody can have an affinity for such a figure, I suppose I do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have one of the craziest, I mean, if it was any character, but, it, you know, in terms of, like, pre-production runs on, on a figure, you have a lot of it covered for Maydine, which I'm, I'm sure we're going to jump into pretty quick here. But, yeah, I mean, I, you sent us this picture of you. How, how old were you when you walked in on this birthday cake? With uh, was it a birthday that, cake with Maydean on it? Yes, that was my seventh birthday. I'd just Seven. gotten off the school bus and walked in the front door on my birthday, and the cake was on the counter with those three figures standing in it. it was uh, General Maydean, okay, Wee so Quay, it was your birthday and uh, home, Black Dustman Guard. And that cake oh, was just sitting okay. there with the toys standing up in it. Uh huh. And 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 was that yep my mom was so standing next to him waiting for me to come through the door she o opened them up and put them on the cake no i didn't mom my mom was real good about yeah wow. she opened them up and yeah, stuck them in the cake as three of my is guests. that actually why you love Maydean? man it, it really it is uh for whatever reason i was <laughs> Much like Steve, I've always been kind of drawn to the lame characters, <laughs> and, you know, these toy lines. I'm not sure why or whatever, but yeah, for a while I had small runs on each of those figures. But over the years, it just progressed uh, more into Maydean, which is the character I like more anyway. So, yeah, it's uh, yeah, that's that's great. Um, so, do you think we should, should we get into the I, what I thought would be kind of interesting because Brock has such a, you know progression of stuff if we started with like the nugget from the archive is kind of a starting point and then yeah, sounds great and then that well this is squidhead he's from star wars and as you know star wars told us satan is lord tis a nugget from the archive tis a nugget oh my god they're gorgeous from the archive Um, all right. So I know it's, it's, it's boring. We, we've talked about sculpts a lot on this show, but I feel like with this one, it's, it's a little different, right? 
<laughs> yeah, Steve, that you gotta learn how to sell things, man. You can't you can't start <laughs> right off. You know, I'm, you've done a ton of work setting up the show. I'm, I'm like, okay, let's, let's let's let Steve drive a little bit here. <laughs> you can't start off by saying this is going to be boring. Okay, <laughs> this is how you do it. You do it the way I do it, which is you say the word interesting 47 times in 10 <laughs> seconds, and then maybe people will think it's interesting. <laughs> so that the sculpt itself for the whole figure. You know, it starts off as this acetate sculpt by Bill Lemon, who we've, we've talked about a few times on the, on the show. He liked to work in acetate. And um, so that, that is, that's on the archive. Um, and what's interesting about it is that the head changes quite a bit from, from that initial Lemon sculpt, which has, his head's kind of more, I don't know, I guess it's rounder. It's a little more... I guess basketball shaped compared to the the kind of egghead. Yeah, with the, kind the of final sculpt kind matches. of short and squatty. Right, a little meaner looking maybe. <laughs> yeah, because uh, because really does have the... an egghead. <laughs> yes. Well, I think that the the final wax that you're about to discuss actually looks more like the character, anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the, for the the head, you mean? Yeah, I think he does. Yeah, too. yeah, the head. Yeah. yeah. So so the first. The full, you know, original sculpt, it's done in acetate, it has a kind of a rounder head, uh, and then they revised the head in wax, which they would often, they would often rework some of his stuff in wax to kind of soften it up a little bit. And so, Brock, this wax head is in your run, right? Yes. Uh, and the funny thing about that is, is they may have actually reworked some of the other figures as well, because I've also got a wax sculpt torso for the oh. figure. Okay. That uh, the, the arms and legs have never surfaced, but in comparison with the acetate and the actual production figure, I've not really seen any differences other than the head. Nothing jumps out on the torso the way that it does on the head. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Because acetate was harder to work with. It was more finalized, yep. right? It was a subtractive and not an right. additive process. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of this, you know, like Steve was saying, his uh, sculpts were quite stiff, so they would soften a lot of them up and give them a little bit more personality, so to speak. Yeah, because you need Maydeen to be soft and fluffy. and <laughs> Like, you need to feel like he's the kind of guy where you'd eat dinner with him and you'd see one of his beard hairs fall into the soup. And just the <laughs> entire dinner, you just look out the corner of your eye and be a little bit uneasy. And you don't know him well enough to say anything, and just eventually he just eats that whole spoonful of soup, and he doesn't, you know, he just eats it, doesn't think anything about it. You need to feel like that's the character that you're looking at, right? <laughs> that's the, sure. one of the, the leaders of the Rebel Alliance. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> okay. So then I see what you're doing here, Steve. Yeah, so you're, you, you're starting to. Get me? Okay. <laughs> I'm getting you, Steve. It's not that you're boring. It's that I didn't pay enough attention to your show notes. Um, <laughs> well, so, so you're saying that the acetate sculpting that's on the archive mm -hmm. is kind of a nugget, but the real nugget is in Brock's collection, and that <laughs> is the real wax head. So yes. why, why are these in different places, Brock? Do you know? Uh, because I've not been able to get the acetate. <laughs> that's the main reason. But I mean, were they were they I, discovered at the same time? Do you know or? I no, I don't believe so. Uh, I believe uh, the acetate come up long before the head did. Oh. And uh, I, the yeah. person that has the acetate is not where I got the head from either. So. Well, and how, how long ago did you get this? Uh, I think I've had it going on about nine years now, probably. Because uh, I yeah. I got it back in '09. I went on a boat trip in '09 to Ron's house and I seen it and I fell in love with it and then I bothered him when I got home until he sold it to me. <laughs> wow. That's that must have been a yeah. lot of bothering. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. Ron loves me. Yes. At least I like to well, think so anyways. We're now looking at, at three Maydeen heads. Right. We have we have the wax sculpt that has like a little uh metal sprue in it. Um and then, Yeah, I think it's the pen originally used for i don't know if it was really used for or if ron added that just for display purposes I, I i'm not sure about that you'd have to ask him and then next to that is as far as the, the pan goes and then a redhead right this is kind yep. of tripping me out here like i'm getting a little bit tired of mr <laughs> these three Medine heads you know what i'm i'm thinking of sky is when we were at uh, the getty and all those head sculptures in a row <laughs> this is what i'm yeah, seeing that's here right. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, you got the the hard copy Dynacast. So that'll be the next stage, and then that's the first shot on the end there, right, Brock? Yeah. Uh, uh, several years ago, probably even before I I got the yeah I know it was a uh, fact before I got the the sculpt head. Uh, the Earth turned up what seemed like a million of those, a right? Bag full. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, a bag full of them. They sold them on their website, you know, forever. Yeah. But the funny thing about it was, is almost all of them had a different number wrote on the side of the right. Head. So yeah, there was I should... some reason to keep pumping them out and thankfully my OCD does not mean I have to get every single one of the different numbers. Yeah, I'm not I satisfied should, uh, with just the one. Yeah. But, I should, uh, I, man, I have a, I need to check what number I have one of those too. And I can't remember what the number is. Uh, should we should, uh, I, well, I, I can't remember what mine is. Mine is like three or six or something. I can't remember to be honest with you. I haven't looked at it in a long time. That so, so there are numbers on the side of this first shot head. Yeah, uh, I think on just about every one of them I've seen that's shot in that color, they've got uh, numbers written in Sharpie on the side of them. It's kind of, wow. Okay, so so those are the three Maydeen heads. I guess Kenner must have just had a lot of trouble. You know, between the actor and Kenner, it seems like they spent way too much time thinking about this character (laughs) that is not that engaging and a toy that is not fun at all. Like, whatever they were trying to do, they didn't achieve. Right, but they kept trying. This, <laughs> this weird egghead dude with gray hair and a gray beard, and then the actor has a weird fake, you know, uh, beard that was a holy grail beard, and and the hair doesn't match, and yeah, none of it works. Well, maybe they got some kind of early shots of those deleted scenes and thought since he yelled a lot in them that he was going to be more exciting than he really was. <laughs> right. <laughs> Stagger! <laughs> <laughs> I love the uh, way he just sits there calmly until they tell him to go every time, though. I mean, just never <laughs> shows any emotion except for when he has to yell. It's great. <laughs> uh, now, Steve, you've given us a lot of interesting Medine stuff, or Brock has sent us a lot of interesting Medine stuff. Yes. I don't think we should talk about all of it, though. No, it's a lot. We've talked it's a lot. about a lot of these things. We've talked about, about hard copies and proto molds before. Mm-hmm. The bagged sample, that's interesting. Have we, have we talked about the bag samples before, Steve? Uh, if we have, we definitely haven't covered it as much as those other, other stages, no. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, so, why don't you tell us about this? So, this, for those of you who aren't watching this, um, this is a, a Maydean figure that is in a plastic bag that is stapled to a, uh, an index card. The index card has a bunch of information. It says item name, vendor... It has a couple dates on it, and then it has some notes about the figure. So what is this, and what was it about, Brock? Uh, uh, well, it's uh, pretty much a standard QC figure or whatever which they pulled from the line, and a lot of times the vendors would send them back uh, you know, with notes on them, or I guess they would send them to Kenner, and Kenner would send them back saying, hey, you need to you know, readjust this or that. A lot of times it was you know, for checking paint apps and that kind of thing or whatever. And I think this one in particular, they were – wanting uh part of his outfit to be darker maybe his belt mm. i can't remember off the top of my head but they needed something to be a little bit darker color but the funny yeah. thing is to me looking at it uh the the hair and the beard actually seem darker than most of the production figures so i'm yeah. not sure yeah i mean it looks like it's a almost a dark gray like a really dark gray right and and did but, did you get this from the the crazy joe iglesias find like a decade ago I did. Well, I didn't get it directly from him, but it did come from that sign. Yeah, we should talk yeah, to Joe because we used to talk to Joe all the time. Um, speaking of uh, collectors who, when they are upset, tend to make themselves very vocal. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he like had this crazy find of all these, and they're all attached to the Smile vendor. So Smile was uh-huh. a vendor that made figures in Macau, mm-hmm. um, and there's. Basically, that's the only signed sample figures I've ever seen is all of these ones from Macau. Um, and they all, I, I got a Chewy. I'm really happy about that because they're just really hard to find. Um, yeah, he found, uh, he found quite a few of them. Yeah, I, I don't know the story behind that, but that's, that's pretty yeah. good. I, uh, I was just noticing, I, uh, there's the, the last note on this in the comments section, it's something, and it ends with, must be improved. And all I can hear is just Richard Marquand screaming that, <laughs> must be improved! <laughs> that is, I, I don't know what it is, but... <laughs> that's stumbling! That's not, I'll show you how to stagger! 
Please, Mr. Warpon. Did I tell you? Uh, yeah, no, it's, I, I love seeing the notes on this and then, uh, the, the dating as well. So this has a nine one eighty three, but I guess that could be either September or, uh, I guess if it's someone writing it in the States, it's probably September, but, uh, September and, and, the, and, the, and the funny thing about that is that would have been eight days before I seen the one in my cake. <laughs> wow. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so oh, that's funny. So eight that's days before. So- so then these are just so these it's, are like it could running be down, production. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most most QC samples are just running production. It's just, you know, they randomly go to the line, you know, yank some things off of it, check them to make sure everything's running properly, you know, and look at it. And it's possible with this being made in Macau, it may be, you know, just for that particular variant right. that they were having to check to make sure that those variants are working, which may have come out, you know, early, later, just depending on whatever when, I'm not like exactly the factory sure. got yeah when the factory got the 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 license so i, I right. think brock i bet if you look at your childhood medine it's not made in macau most likely not yeah that's kind most of most likely not it's yeah interesting. So, so macau must have just because i the one i have is also from macau and i think it has the same date so maybe that was just the the macau factory it's just like okay, guys, we're ready to do it. Is this working out? And and that's what the that's what they said. Okay, that's. But wait a minute, is my Chewbacca really in Macau? <laughs> I have to. I, I'm sorry, I have to run upstairs and find out. Right? Don't yeah. I have to? Sure. I think you I'll better. Be to yeah. Okay, you guys can talk. <laughs> I tell you, and I'll keep recording. I tell you what, I, I will go uh, look at mine and see what that bottom note says. Must be improved. <laughs> okay, Steve, right, do you have good. one of these? Do you have a, ca- a sign sample? I don't, unfortunately. Oh. Hey, hey. Yeah. Okay. I know. I used to, but not anymore. <laughs> hey, if it helps you any, I know where it's at. <laughs> I don't have it, but I know where it's at. <laughs> the one I used to have? Yeah, was it Squidhead? It was Squidhead. Yeah, I, I, I know. I He's think, from Star uh... Wars. <laughs> he definitely is from Star Wars. He's also from Hell. Uh, no, I, I think... Uh... I think I had, I had sold mine to Isaac, if I remember right. Yes. Yeah. Actually, I think what you did is you sold it to me, and I because I oh. was trading it to Isaac to get. Oh, maybe. It's funny because this actually this actually ties into this show because <laughs> you sold it to me so I could trade it to him to get my pointer blueprint. Really? Oh, yeah, that that's what I traded weird. it for was the the pointer blueprint. Well, there you go. Man, let me see what that this is... says. Says. Brown color need darker. Okay, brown colors. That's the belt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh man, I don't know if I can read that. It's just a scribble. <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture of it with my phone and blow it up. What we're getting we're getting forensic that... here, Sky. It's getting forensic yeah, lab level. <laughs> okay, so so what if I? Uh... Wait, this is weird. It says the same thing. The okay. brown color needs to be darker. <laughs> brown color need darker. Why have I never read this? <laughs> it says snipper brush. Okay, yeah. Snipper Upper brush. brush strawberry oh, yeah. out B imperfect. <laughs> must must be improved. Are they all the same? What? Yes, it says the exact same thing on the Chewbacca. Something brush. Yeah, something brush, something must be improved. Huh. And it says made in Macau. But it's definitely the same handwriting, and it's in the exact same space, and it's on the exact same day. So they were just not at all happy about the brown. I mean, the brown, (laughs) you need this to be darker brown. Now that you say that, let me look and see. I've got a couple of others here. Let me see what they say. Oh Make God. sure that there's not some kind look, of look at him strutting craziness. I've got a <laughs> biker scout here. So, it was done in November. Ah, okay. So it would have been it would, but it's also made in Macau. And it says overspray. I can't read the rest of that. I don't know something about overspray. So you're, I don't know. you're Maydean and Sky's Chewbacca were separated at birth. 
<laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. Yeah, they, <laughs> and they still well, have the I mean, same hey, issues. <laughs> maybe Maydeen's just been shaved down. Yeah, maybe. Right. <laughs> brush. <laughs> leaving upper, just the beard. Upper brush strawberry must be improved. <laughs> Mine looks like upper brush strengthen must be improved. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Well, this is this has been fun. Look at that. Yeah. You know, Ma- uh, Ma- Macau Adventures. Macau Adventures. Yeah. Oh man, that is. Were uh, Sky? Were you around whenever I was making the connection to the bag sample that Steve used to own? I no, I don't think. I think he might have been gone for that. Right? You didn't hear about that. <laughs> No. Okay. So uh, you had asked if I had one, and I, I I don't. I did at one point. I had a squid head, <laughs> um, and I I had sold it to Brock, who had traded it to Isaac for the Maydean Pointer Blueprint, which is in Brock's run that we're going to talk about. Which is just that's so weird. Wow. Okay. Well, then let's talk about that then. If jump, that's the next item that. here, yeah, yeah let's, let's let's jump to that. that. There's other fun items that we're not going to be talking about because Brock's uh, Maydean run is just amazing. Uh, so we'll talk about a couple other things, but this yeah. one definitely. That may be the only time anybody's ever said anything about Maydean is amazing. That's great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, all right. So so the blueprint. Okay. Now now we know how you got it, uh, and. I just, I don't know, I was watching the scene again today with Maydean just to kind of see, like, does he actually have this weird thing? And sure enough, he had, they, it's to the T, this weird, like, it looks like, it, I don't know if I would call it a pointer. It looks like, a, I have no idea. Cattle looks, prod. Yeah, cattle prod, remote, <laughs> I don't really know. Oh. Fly swatter. Fly swatter. Magic wand. <laughs> kind of crazy combination of all <laughs> Yeah, it's because uh, he doesn't actually point at anything with it in in the movie. He just kind of walks around with it in his hand. But uh, That's yeah, all so have to do. They don't yeah, business, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure you know Marquand had had it when he was directing that scene that he <laughs> yelling at everybody. It's <laughs> probably why he didn't have it then. But stagger. <laughs> um, but yeah, so. So I know in terms of blueprints, a lot of the the figure weapons for is it mainly Jedi figures that a lot of the weapons the blueprints have surfaced like this. I I think the only one off the top of my head that I can recall seeing that wasn't Jedi was I think there's a partial line drawing print of some sort for the Zuckus rifle. Other oh, than that, I think all okay. the other things I've seen are Jedi. Yeah, because I, I remember seeing like the Imperial Guard staff, uh, maybe a Gamorrean Guard axe, some others. Yeah, but, yeah. That, uh, I think there might be a prune face gun out there. Okay. And I know there's a yeah. Jedi blast, uh, a Luke Jedi blaster as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I think I think blueprints are something we we have definitely don't talk about too often. Um, so it's it's nice to actually see one here and. <laughs> It's. I, I remember asking you earlier the date on it, and just because I'm I'm trying to date all this weird stuff related to Maydean, and the blueprint you have, you told me it was dated July 26th, 1982. So that's right. in between him him getting his scenes filmed, but before the trademark is is uh, registered. So I thought that was kind of interesting. You kind of don't get forget, this. Steve. I, I've edited out the 45 minutes of you talking about the trademark. Oh, so, right. Okay. Yes. So the, <laughs> Never the trademark was, was later, but I mean, there's only so much Maydee in the world can take. You understand? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Our tongues cannot, you know, withstand this magnitude. No. 15 um, minutes is far too much. Yes. <laughs> Probably. We're, we're well on our, like, for, but the thing is you happen to have such nice examples of things. Like you have a Kenner employee store bagged figure. Um, yep. Which is just really sweet. It's just a bagged figure with a sticker on it. But I don't think we've ever talked about an employee store bagged figure. So, you know, the, the oh. Kenner store used to be able to, if you worked at Kenner, you could go get figures. You know, the hot toy. Everyone wanted a Maydean. Everyone wants a Maydean. You know, Dad, where's the Maydean? <laughs> you know, here's the Cabbage Patch Kid. I don't want a Cabbage Patch Kid. I want a General Maydean. Um, <laughs> and, and this was a way that you could, if you worked for Kenner, you could get a little sweet Maydean on the side. Uh, and it's cool though because it has like a little sticker. I've never seen those before. Yeah, yeah. Those they're are... uh, uh, Bill 
I don't know if I can't remember if Trace was on them, but I know Bill Wills several years ago uh, turned up a small find of these of like 15 to 20 figures, something like that maybe. There used to be a list at Rebel Scum of all the figures that was there, and fortunately for me, this is one of the ones that was there. I also had a Rebel Soldier at one time. I don't have it anymore, but it was funny because a lot of times the tag on them wouldn't directly match up hmm. with the character. Interesting. Be It'd be something or... similar that you can get kind of the idea. I think like my uh, uh, Rebel Soldier might have said uh, Rebel Commando or Rebel oh. Commander. I can't remember which one it was or whatever, but yeah. it was something similar, but – now oh, that's uh, yeah, whatever they had back hand. then they knew there was no difference now this this is right. i'm just coming to this realization now but these red stickers are they just the ones that they would use for the return of the jedi vinyl carry case i remember those yeah. being red is that just what they are that would that would be correct okay and that i guess that makes sense so they, that just, they wouldn't have a did they put a, make a rebel soldier one for that i know they would probably make a rebel commando but Interesting. I don't remember they made one for Rebel Soldier. So, yeah, you might be right. That maybe why they had to use the Commando one. Huh. Yeah. And then awesome. you just have a, you just have a, a filthy oh, – it was funny. So I was, I was watching the uh, first baseball game ever with, with my girlfriend, you know, who's Serbian. So she doesn't know when I'm just making stuff up. And so I, I was referring to a, a fastball as filthy. She's like, you're just making that up. People don't say that. I'm like, yeah, no, that was a filthy fastball. Like that, that was just – I was like, it's got cheese on it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, I was like, what do you mean, go yard? It's a term. No, you're making that up. No, really, it's a, it's a real, there's a lot of terms for home runs. Um, but uh, uh, you have a filthy Maydean carded sample collection, is, is where I was going with that. So, so you, have, you have two Maydeans on Empire Strikes Back. Uh, you In have more ways than one. <laughs> yes. So you have one on a snaggletooth, which is a great combo of no one likes these figures. Um, <laughs> and it says in Sharpie, Captain Maydean. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. He's never been called Captain before, right, Steve? No. And any other thing, he was always general. So I guess <laughs> Kenner gave him a demotion um, for all the trouble he was causing in, in the development process. I don't know. <laughs> And then, and then one of them yeah. on a on a sixty five back proof. Not me on a forty eight back. Forty eight back, yeah. Luke and Hoth, it's, it's a, yeah. It's a Luke Hoth, and I just love it because the Luke Hoth picture's there, but then the nameplate is X'd out. But then instead of having the name anywhere else, it's like on one of those weird label makers right. that's in black with white lettering. Yeah, and it just says General Maydean on those weird. <laughs> label makers i've never seen that before either i mean you no. have a lot of interesting stuff i've never seen before brock the interesting thing about the one on the snaggletooth card is it's actually an unproduced version of the figure uh the collar is completely different than any production variant that's ever been out there the, the little insignias or whatever on it has uh three lines that's like uh, two horizontal one vertical line where all of the production figures only had the two horizontal lines Huh. And I had, I'd only ever seen the only time I've ever seen that uh, back when I first started collecting this was on the Snaggletooth card was the only way you could find it, huh. and uh, which most likely means it's some type of pre-production. I'm not sure if it's a first shot because it looks like it has dates on the back of the leg, which doesn't necessarily mean it's not a first shot, but it's an EP or something. But the interesting thing about it is, is the non-production color first shot that I have the the gray and the white one. Whenever I acquired it, uh, it come in and it's got the exact same thing going on on his collar, and that's the only other time I've ever seen that. And huh. that one is actually undated and non welded and non production color or whatever. Yeah. So it, it, it's interesting that for whatever reason they changed the collar before it went into full scale production. Wow. Well, that that is uh, Steve. I think that's almost as much Maydean as I can take. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're hitting, the, hitting the edge here. <laughs> I think we are. Yeah. Um, the only thing we have to talk about now is actually our, our vocab. Right. Which yeah. I don't really know. If, okay. It, it isn't actually a vintage vocab term because it's just a descriptor, but I think it should be a Kivecast vocab okay. because it's a good example of something that is valuable only because it is rare. Mm -hmm. There's nothing yes. interesting about it at all. It's like the freeze frame <laughs> weak way. And freeze it's, frame weak way. it's yeah. just something that 
if it wasn't rare, you wouldn't care. And I'm, of course, talking about the Trilogo Medine. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. all right. So, if, if you've never heard of it, probably the hardest to find production. Okay, this is weird, Steve, right? Because I can't say it's one of the hardest to find production figures out there because basically any Empire Strikes Back Mexican figure is a thousand times more rare. And, right. And any most French figures are in less quantities than this as far as like Meccano's. Um, mm. it's, it's weird when people really start caring. Like something has to be rare but not impossible to find. Like, like the Rocket Fat. You know, there's... Um, there's enough of them that people can want them, but they're not so rare that no one can get them. Yeah. So, so yeah. that's the case with the Tri Logo Maidin. So mm -hmm. the Tri Logo, the figures that came out in Europe, and they are not that hard to find in general, I don't think, right? But people were putting runs together, and eventually they realized that Maidin did not exist. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's the point that I was going to make about it because. I believe that the reason it is so popular among title collectors is because they are trying to put a set together. And, you know, some of these other, you know, rarities, talk about the French figures, you know, or the Mexican figures or whatever, the, the likelihood of anybody ever completing a set is, you know, almost nil. So they don't get as excited about picking those things that maybe when you have a goal of putting this whole set together and, you know, mating is rare, but you have a shot. Of actually putting together a trilogo set, so maybe that's why it appeals to people so much. Yeah, that, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, because it's, um, it's it's a rare one in a set of things that aren't particularly rare. Yeah, right. So, so I guess uh, Joe O'Brien on his great site trilogo.info, he has a write up from it's been a, a few years ago about the trilogo Maidine, which it has a, a full history. It's it's a great read, so we'll, we'll definitely like we should point people there, but. Just to kind of try and distill it into something quick, um, I guess the Trilogo Medines, they were only distributed in France, um, which I guess that's one factor. They weren't as widely distributed Europe wide. Um, and then in terms of, I guess there's two main variations in terms of the bubble. So there's the, the double stem Trilogo bubble, which has the two little protrusions down by the feet. And then uh, even tougher is what they call the miscard bubble. So it's stuff that, like on Meccano and other Trilogo figures that were miscarded uh, for whatever reason, there was some particular bubble style that that would have happened with. And there are, I guess, a few of these Trilogo Medines that have that too. Um, so Steve, before when you were talking about stuff that was boring, so <laughs> not to mention that it's boring, I cannot get behind the whole Meccano bubble thing. I mean, I yeah. know I'm a French collector and everything. <laughs> or whatever, but like uh, Stéphane Foucault, you know, he's a great collector, and and but whenever he talks about the bubbles, like I just can't care. Like I just, <laughs> I I literally, I'm not actually joking. I literally picked some um, lint out of my belly button while you were talking, and I was staring at the <laughs> at the lint, and I was like, this is more interesting than than the bubbles on trilogos. <laughs> I, maybe I'm just a jerk, but that's my opinion. Medine's fascinating. The bubbles are not interesting. What, what yeah. do you think? Do you guys agree? Well, yeah, I would say I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm just stating information, not not yes. <laughs> saying whether or not I, I uh, particularly like. I know like there's for Trilogo viewing pilots. There's different variations that I just I I I'm not. I can't I can't go that way either. Okay. So well, I yeah. just took a picture of my belly button lint. And we'll oh, have man. a poll up. What is more interesting, Sky's oh, belly God. button lint or Trilogo bubbles? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how it tastes. Um, okay, so, so we got the boring part out of the way. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and how many of these are known to exist? Well, I guess so. Back in this article, it was roughly twenty to twenty-five known. Uh, I'd guess I don't know. It's probably roughly in that same number still. Um, I, I don't yeah, know. I don't think there's been any kind of major find of any. I mean, I'm sure there's probably some tucked away out there that people don't know about, but how many? Who knows? Yeah, right. Do, do you have one, Brock? I do not. Do you care to? I do not. 
No, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm right there with you in the belly button, Lent. I'd, I'd much rather <laughs> check that out, Scott. <laughs> well, I think that the Trilogo Medine is interesting. I mean, if I were a Medine oh, I, I do really too. Care. But just the, just the, like, oh, but this is the rare bubble. It's, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's getting into some uh, some nitty gritty uh, nitty gritty beard. Um, so, okay, so we know that there's roughly, let's say, twenty to thirty ish out there that are known. Probably more than that, but um, it, it was interesting trying to figure out what was going on with the values of them, also. Um, and there's a good summary on that that article that kind of sums it up. Uh, I guess. In 2010, there was one that sold on eBay by someone who didn't know what they had that was for 90 euro, um, and he got flooded with oh, offers wow. right away. And so obviously, whoever got it at that initial bargain, uh, they were out of luck because it got relisted and then it sold for about 2,000 eventually. Um, so that's 2010. Uh, jump forward to 2015, the the Nego auction, he had one that sold for about 12000 but I guess that one had some ink on the back of the card. Um, and then uh, some others in between there were anywhere from like three to 6,000 euro. Um, but I, I mean, other than, uh, do you guys know of anyone that had sold relatively recently? I've not seen one in forever. So yeah. your guess would be as good as mine. Yeah. Yeah, Sky? I I haven't. I was trying to think about any of those like British auctions that mm. that might have popped one up. I don't. I don't remember. Or yeah. like if Hakes has one, I don't. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. I the 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 one that went for ninety bucks is a great example of how to just how mad you are when things get outed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's a crazy story. Um, and then, as promised, Steve. Yes, yeah, we have another crazy story yes. <laughs> related to the Trilogo Maydeen. <laughs> so, so Darren McAleese, the the great longtime Irish collector who sort of like stepped out of the hobby for like a couple of years when I got started, so I didn't know who he was really, and then he came back and he just has an amazing collection. He's a really cool guy, uh, amazing karaoke singer, and uh, he at one point had three Maydeens, three <laughs> Trilogo Maydeens. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a I, there's a picture I had seen many times <laughs> of him, just looking as happy as can be, holding the three of them. And uh, I, I, I'd asked him like, Darren, what was the story with this? I, I feel like I might have heard it before, but I, I can't quite remember. And he responded to me with uh, quite an epic, <laughs> epic tale that I think uh, our, uh, our local. Irishman on the podcast is going to try and retell, right? Okay. My father didn't right. do it. My father didn't do it. Okay, I've got to practice lines from In the Name of the Father. Okay. Okay. Hey, buddy. It's an incredible story, really. It involves meeting a black hole collector that nobody has ever seen before and flying to meet him in a huge envelope or cash in the airport. I had worked really hard trying to complete the Trilogo run and tapped up Stefan Foucault and Joe O'Brien, every Trilogo big hitter I could to shake one out. Well, turns out Andy Davis had an AFA-80, an ungraded one, and was desperate to bag the single AFA-85 that I was dealing for. Andy and me go way back, and I knew he was chasing the Trilogo AFA-85 set. So, I agreed to trade him for his 80 my soon-to-be 85, plus some cash to ease the head of the five-figure purchase. But the seller was very elusive. <laughs> and sometimes he didn't respond to emails for weeks at a time. The whole process was... De- oh, no, I'm trying to fall apart. Okay, you're, I'm doing sky, really well. Sky, sky, yeah, you, you're not quite Scottish yet. You're okay, veering exactly. towards Scotland, so you got to veer back towards I Ireland. thought Giuseppe didn't do it. The whole process was difficult and protracted. He had a small window to meet me and was agreed to meet at Gatwick Airport. So I arranged to meet Andy and told him to bring both his Maydeans. I didn't even have a phone number for George and he had to take a massive leap of faith to bag the prize. So I fly to meet him and arranged to meet him outside a coffee shop at the airport. <laughs> that was an Australian <laughs> airport. <laughs> 
And as I didn't have a picture of him, he was very <laughs> Scottish. Damn it. Okay, I don't think I can do this anymore. I'm uh, so close. You were close. Yeah, you, you made it a good chunk of the way through. <laughs> and as I didn't have a picture of him, he was all very tense. But he arrived, and after some small talk, we did the deal. He had traveled to France to buy it from none other than Arno Grunberg years earlier. I believe Arnaud regretted the sale, but was getting rid of his trilogos. So I bagged the final figure, and when met Andy soon after, when we took the famous peak, he got his 85, I got my 80, and everyone was happy. So it's traveled from <laughs> France to UK to the US to grading to back to the UK. It certainly racked up the air miles. <laughs> As for rarity, I used to go to the big shows in the UK in the early noughties, and never saw one in the flesh until that day. I've seen pics, but never the real deal. And the envy of seeing the Nego Bape and others, them, their collections really drove me to complete the run. I'm not rich, I, but made the war chest available to make it happen. I guess the lesson is, if you're serious, you have to be ready to spring. If the opportunity arises. <laughs> hey, you made it. You made it through. <laughs> How are your ears, Brock? <laughs> I barely made it through, but I'm here. I think he killed himself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go back and rewatch the, the, the ALDS. That was more enjoyable. <sighs> uh, Did well, the story come through with my stupid accent or no? Um, I think, uh, I think so. Yeah, I, I, I it's, yeah, it's, I, uh, it's a crazy one. I mean, it's. <laughs> okay, why don't you just summarize the story and I'll just cut that all, right. all out. <laughs> no, 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 Sky, you can't. No, that, that's, no. Uh, so, yeah, he, <laughs> God, how do you summarize this without starting to, yeah. Uh... <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> now, now you should sing the story. Oh man, yeah. So we really get there and all wrapped up in one. Oh, uh, I, I think uh, I don't I th think. I think that... everyone can just listen to it again and they can find out. Yeah, I think so that's, he didn't. That's the best. He didn't end up keeping all three. No, no, no. But at one, point. at one point he did have all three, and yeah, there's a great picture of uh, of uh, Darren, and then <laughs> Andy and Darren made T-shirts of uh, each other holding them, and then wore them. I think it was probably at Celebration Europe. So that's a great great kind of recap to the whole madness but uh thanks thanks darren for for sending the story and and apologies now for for yeah, uh, to, to you and and your great people for the yeah. atrocities that have been visited upon you um. <laughs> yeah the, uh, you went to scotland and australia and at, at, at some point you really you sounded just straight up like you were from, from london and I, I don't know what was going on there <laughs> I'd, I'd like to get a wreck up the air miles. Yeah, yeah Sky, Sky definitely did wreck up the air. I'd like to get a, like a linguistics coach to like listen to all the different places that I went because all I was trying to do was channel Daniel Day Lewis from the trailer for the movie In the Name of the Father. Ah, my father okay. Giuseppe Conan didn't do it. I didn't do it. It's just this guy sitting in a chair talking about all the people who didn't set off the bomb. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, well so, you know what? You you persevered. You survived it. We have all survived it. I think. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's the story of the Trilogo Medine. I I must admit, when I see it, I do kind of want it, even though it doesn't matter. Like the fact that it's rare does excite me. Yeah, yeah. But which bubble do you want? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want the belly button lint bubble. <laughs> oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well then, uh, I think that's our show, Steve, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, we, we've uh, we've we've made it to the other end um, <laughs> of the Maydine madness. Yeah, it's been kind of a funny show. Like it's it's been a standard show, but everything's been in the wrong order. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but hey, yeah, that's all right. Maydine in a nutshell. <laughs> that's right. Well, you know, yeah. Steve, in, in 17th century uh, French philosophy, Blaise Pascal said that uh, all of existence is like a game of tennis. You know, the, the, the ball doesn't change. It just has different placement on the court. Um, so I would say that's – I was just – I think people turned off when we started doing the Irish accent. So we can just say whatever <laughs> we want now. <laughs> uh, well, it, it, was a, it was a fun one. I, uh, I uh, 
It was. <laughs> so speaking of, okay, so let's just let everyone go. I, I, I got to right. go to bed. All right, good night, guys. Good night. Oh, wait. Cool, man. Oh, yeah. wait, what do we have to say, what? Steve? You have to say something. All right. Wampa Wampa. <laughs> Adios. <laughs> I just Be good. I'm going to scare him in the shadow. Oh, well. <laughs>